Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Naquan Dream Show on this Friday, April the 5th, 2019. Thank you so much for joining us today. The Scooter Prison Pipeline is the issue today. It's a, it, it is a big issue in American schools and American school districts. And it is a invisible pipeline that has black students predominantly black students, but black students. There are students of color, but I particularly want to focus on black students. It has black students disciplined much more harshly than white students who are doing the same thing. They get suspended, then they get end up in a criminal justice system. Before I get into the facts and the statistics about the school to prison pipeline, I want you to take a look at this video from Mike, then I'll come back with the rest of my commentary. Take a look at this teacher called me up to the front of the classroom and the officer handcuffed me, walked me down the hall, and it, it was humiliating, very embarrassing. Patrice Colors was just 12 years old when she was arrested by police in her middle school. I completely felt like anything I did was up for scrutiny and up for criminalization. What happened to Colors is reflective of a much bigger problem within our educational system in regards to students of color being criminalized within their own schools. This issue is called the school to prison pipeline. Yo, bro, he not even resisting. Let him go, dog. He not okay. even resisting. When it comes to disciplinary action, schools treat black children jarringly different than how they treat white children. As a result, many children of color can end up in the criminal justice system at a very young age. And for older high school students, criminalization and arrests can continue into adulthood. Black kids and white kids, if they do the same behavior, the black kid gets more punishment, worse punishment, more often they get punished for the same activities. Colors was one of these young children. She talked about her experience in the best-selling book, When They Call You a Terrorist. Policing and criminalization isn't just the police on campus, which is a huge part of it, but it's the setup in which a campus feels like a prison environment. So, just how bad is this problem? Let's start with this. According to the most recent and available data, during the 2013 to 2014 school year, black students were 25% of the 143,866 students referred to law enforcement. That's a clear disparity when you consider black students were only 15% of the public school population that year. Also, black girls in particular are nearly five times more likely to be given out of school suspensions and nearly four times more likely to get arrested in school than white girls. Black girls are characterized as having an attitude. The disparities happen because there is racism baked into the system. To take it a step further, the school to prison pipeline may have even played a role in the story of Trayvon Martin. Trayvon had reportedly been suspended from his Miami high school for alleged possession of marijuana. His parents sent him to Sanford, Florida to serve out his suspension while under supervision. That's where he was killed by George Zimmerman. That begs the question, if Trayvon's school had found another way to discipline him, would he have ever come in contact with Zimmerman? Trayvon's death and Zimmerman's acquittal motivated colors and others to create the Black Lives Matter movement. In order to end the cycle, advocates have proposed restorative justice programs that build relationships between staff and students and that bring in more counselors instead of police. There is a culture clash between the school environment and what police officers do. And so they are in a school environment looking for criminal infractions. Colors says removing police from schools is only the first step in disrupting the school to prison pipeline. Ultimately, she says, it's about empowering all communities to determine what best serves their children. I think people need to think about what kind of education are we trying to provide children. The Naquan Dream Show officially has a Patreon. If you like the content on this show or like to support the show, you can log on to www.patreon.com slash the Naquan Dream Show for more. The Naquan Dream Show will return in just a moment. Welcome back. <clears throat> Before I get started on my commentary, the only thing that I would say about that video that I just showed you from Mike is 
I think it was a stretch, a very long stretch to try to somehow equate or try and say that the school to prison pipeline had something to do with the Trayvon Martin incident. Don't know what the Trayvon Martin incident was. It happened back in 2012 when I was in eighth grade, and this white man named George Zimmerman killed Trayvon Martin, and, and George Zimmerman tried to say that Trayvon attacked him, and he used self defense. He got off for it. I don't think you could say that the school to prison pipeline had something directly or indirectly had something to do with what happened to Trayvon Martin. Because this is my rationale behind it. That incident where he interacted with that white man like that, that could have happened to anybody. Regardless of what the situation is. It's sad to say this in this country, but that incident with Trayvon Martin, that could have happened to him regardless if he was suspended or not. It might not have been the George Zimmerman, but it could have been another white man. You know, you don't ever know when you're going to end up in these types of situations. So... I don't think you could sit there and try to equate or try and say that um, the Trayvon Martin incident did the school to prison pipeline because that incident could not only have happened to him, but could have happened to other black males just because of the climate that we live in. You know, certain people think that they can go and kill other people and then they come off of self-defense. And that's in Florida with the stand your ground laws. So that could have happened to anybody, regardless if they were suspended or not, for whatever reason. And it's sad to say that that could have happened to Trayvon, whether or not he was suspended or not, just because of the climate that we live in now, and the stand your ground laws that's in Florida, with his space saying, yes, you could get into a competition with somebody, you can shoot them, and then you could say self defense to get off with it. That's just my rationale behind it. Other than that, everything else that you said was completely spot on. I just wanted to get it off my chest because I was like, why do you bring a Trayvon Martin into this? Uh, I don't think I, 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 I don't think this is a school to prison pipeline. I don't think his incident with Joe Zimmerman particularly is a school to prison pipeline issue. If we want to talk about the marijuana um, possession, how they handled the discipline of that, that's one thing. But to bring Joe Zimmerman into it, and say, you know, he that wouldn't he would never been shot and killed and everything else if if he would never been suspended and brought down to another city. You don't know what would have happened. Okay, so I don't think you sit there and try and equate, you know, what Trayvon the Trayvon Martin incident to the Scooter Prison Pipeline. Let me explain to you the Scooter Prison Pipeline started. It started in the 1970s, and this was a way to decrease crime and violence in school. And they try to decrease violence in school, crime in school, by doing these zero-tolerance policies. Zero-tolerance policies are basically policies in schools where you do something wrong, you're automatically suspended. You're automatically have a detention. There's no talking. There's no trying to figure it out. It's just zero-tolerance. So they begin to suspend students for making a gun gesture with a finger. I don't know if it's coming off or I see. So they suspended kids, kids, kids for doing this. They suspended kids for shaping a pop tart to a knife, and they suspended students for a carving instrument to school for Boy Scouts. And this is called the broken window theory. You are suspending kids for the littlest things, and you're making them into things they should be made into. Talking back to teachers, skipping class, being disruptive. That is not something that you should be suspending scholars for. At least not, a, not right away. Let me make this very clear. I am not saying that you cannot suspend people. That is not what I'm saying. But suspension should not be the first thing you go to, you dive into. That should be the very last thing that you go to. 
because that's telling you and that's telling the person that you're trying to recommend, I've tried everything else with you. And you know that I tried to work with you. I tried to do things for you and you keep doing it. I'm going to have to suspend you now. At least they can't say, well, you just went to suspension. No, I gave you detention. I gave you, I gave you the service hours. I gave you all these little different, different, little different things. And you're still acting like you don't lost your mind. So now I got to suspend you. Now, a part of the school to prison pipeline is students of color. But I'm specifically going to focus on black students. So... Black students are suspended and expelled three times greater than white students for doing the same thing. Okay. And this surprised me. Preschoolers, three, four-year-olds are getting suspended. Black children represent 18% of the preschool population, but 48% of preschool children receiving more than one out of school suspensions. In comparison to white students, they represent 43% of preschool enrollment, but 26% of preschool children is here more than one out of school suspension. Let me say that one more time. Black children represent 18%. And white children represent 43% of preschoolers. But black children are suspended 48%. And white children are suspended 26%. There's a big disparity. You're suspending three, four-year-old kids who don't know any better. If they kick you, if they bite you, they're three, they're four. They are not going to know necessarily that is not the thing to do. But suspending them is not the way to go because you're already starting the school to prison pipeline once they enter that door of that school building at three years old. You're not even letting them go to kindergarten first. You're automatically saying, you know what, we're going to start it right now when they walk in that door at three years old. If they hit me, if they bite me, if they swear at me, whatever they do, they're getting suspended. They are three years old. They are four years old. They are still in development. They are still in learning. They don't know those things are not supposed to happen in society. They're three. They're four. They're not 35 years old. They're not 55 years old. They're three and they're four years old. That's just ridiculous to me. Absolutely ridiculous to me. <sighs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. What do I talk about next? There's a lot of stuff to talk about here. A ton of papers. Okay. Now we got to go to arrests. Arrests with officers. So, you see now a lot of police officers are in the schools. Um... You see that mainly in inner city public schools, inner city traditional public schools, not so much with charter schools, but inner city traditional public schools, you see police officers in the school. And I'm not saying to get security guards. I mean actual security guard, I mean actual police officers from the city that they reside in. So the number of school research officers increased by a third from 1997 to 2017. And the reasoning behind a lot of these school research coming into the schools is to prevent mass shootings like the Columbine incident. Everybody knows the Columbine incident happened 20 years ago this month on the 20th. And there's two white boys went into their school in Littleton, Colorado, I think it's a suburb outside of Denver, somewhere around there. Or Aurora, so, so somewhere in Colorado. I don't know where the little, little, little ten is, but it's somewhere in, in Colorado. And they shot and killed 12 peers and one teacher. And at that time, that was the worst that was mass shooting and the worst, no, not the worst mass shooting, the worst high school mass shooting in American history. 
modern American history. Okay. So that was the whole reason why the rationale behind, um, you know, school resources, um, police officers in the school. They call them school resources, but a lot of them are city police officers. They're employed by the city, but they're stationed to work at that particular school. Get this, 92,000 students were arrested during the 2011-2012 school year for low-level violations. Go back to the window, to the broken window theory, suspending students for talking back to teachers, skipping class, and being disruptive. Those are low-level violations that 92,000 scholars got arrested for during the 2011-2012 school year. Would school resources are allowing to arrest students to add them to the criminal justice system? Yes, absolutely, positively. Absolutely, positively, it would continue to uh, add to the to the criminal justice system. Absolutely. If you don't allow the school handle when you when you don't allow the school to handle it, and you allow police officers that are employed by the city and stations the school to handle it, you are not helping a thing. Check this out. While black students represent um, 16% of student enrollment, they represent 27% of students referred to law enforcement and 31% of students subjugated to a school-related arrest. In comparison, white students represent 51% of enrollment, 41% of students for the law enforcement, and 39% of those arrested. Do you notice the comparison here? We have less black students in that represent the student population, but more of them are arrested. So, are these school resource hours to help in anything while they're in the schools? No! No! Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Children with disabilities. More than 25% of boys of color with disabilities receive an out of school suspension. No. No. I have to put my glasses on. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Where are my glasses? Oh, my glasses are. I can't read. What's this thing saying? Okay. Let's quit my eyes. I know I'm only 20. Oh, I can't read that. Okay. 38% of students arrested in 2011-2012 school year were black students. Well, they only 60% of students. Right. Right, 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 right. There's a study done by Columbia University in 2014. It says five-year-old boys without incarcerated fathers are ready for school. And five-year-old boys with incarcerated fathers are less behaviorally ready um, for schools or places, especially extra class. So that's another thing. You don't know how to interact, interact with black students, particularly black boys. So you think they're dumb and you think they're stupid and you put them in special education class when they don't need to be there. Okay, but you don't know how to interact with them on a, uh, on another level. So you think that they're dumb and stupid, and you put them in special classes. So we're going to talk, but that's another video segment that we're going to discuss as well, because that is an issue. Putting black boys and black children in special education classes when they don't even need to be in there in the first place. Okay, there was a study in two thousand two done that claimed that black students do not misbehave at a higher rate. Um. But they are suspended at a higher rate. White students are suspended for provable offenses, smoking, vandalism, cursing out teachers, administrators, stuff like that. But black students are suspended for disrespect. Black students are suspended for, for, for disrespect. 97% of suspensions were determined by administration. In California, 40% of suspensions during the 2010-2011 school year were due to defiance. In New York City, 51% of suspensions during the 2006-2007 school year were black students due to profanity. 
and 57% of those expenses were due to ed subordination. I got to listen. When you're in a school system, you're going to be disrespected. It's just how it is today. Is that is, is that how it should be? No, but that's how it is. But you can't jump to a suspension every time a kid, a scholar, gets an attitude or be disrespectful. You be disrespectful with them back. Sass them back. Put them in their place. But you don't suspend them. That's not the answer. How does this affect black students? It's a study conducted in Texas for 2000-2002, and it's from seventh grade students. And they tracked the academic record for six years, and they found that 31% of students that were suspended repeated a grade, with only 5% that were not suspended. Students who were suspended or expelled were two times as likely to drop out than those who were. 23% of middle, middle or high school students that were disciplined ended up in contact with a PO, probation officer, with only 2% of those not disciplined. Students who were expelled or suspended are three times more likely to commit a, come into contact with a JPS, juvenile probation, as the following year than the ones who are not. What do you think that scholars are going to do when they are suspended, out of school suspension? What do you think they're going to do? Do, do, do? do you think that they are just going to sit there at home? What do you think they're going to do? They're going to sit there at home, and they're going to play their Fortnite, and they are going to do all types of things. They're going to do all types of things. They're not going to learn. I guarantee you. Guarantee you. They are not going to do anything educational. I don't care if you send work with them home. I don't care if you mail it to them, email them, DM them on Snapchat. They're not going to do the work. They're going to stay home all day and they're going to play Fortnite. So what does the spending them going to do? They get back in their work because they're not going to do it. They, they, they are not going to do work when you send home. They're not going to do it. Okay, so they're going to be back in their work. The problem or the reason why they got, they got suspended for police is not going to be solved because usually what happens is this. A kid gets suspended, okay, then they come back three, four days later, the situation is supposed to just disappear. You don't sit down again. You don't talk about it. You don't come up with solutions how to do it. It's just supposed to disappear. I've been suspended before, so I know how it is. I was in school, but I've been suspended before. So I know exactly how all this works. Then they get behind. Then they get behind and they get behind. Now, this is, might just be with elementary school students. But say a high schooler gets suspended. What do you think that high school is going to do? If they, live in the inner, inner, if, they, if they live in the inner city, and they live in poverty, okay, and they live in the hood, what do they see? Drugs, violence, gangs, and they're probably going to be involved in those things if they haven't been already. Because they feel like that's the only thing available. Because the school gave up on them, you suspended them. Give me one second, my computer's about to die. you for waiting for that. The school's giving up on them. Everybody's giving up on them. Everybody's giving up on them. So what do you think they're going to do? They're not going to do anything productive, I tell you that much. I ain't really productive. So not only have you lost days of instructional um, education, probably gotten yourself to some trouble. This is the reality of what people have to go through, particularly black 
boys, black girls, black people in general in America. You're not looked at as a child, as a human, a child. You're looked at as something like extraterrestrial. So I'm not understanding that. In the American school system, when it comes to discipline, or when it comes to just a child, you're not looked at as a child. You're looked at as an extraterrestrial thing. These white children could do whatever the hell they want, want to do. And basically nothing happens to them. They're not suspended on the same level as black boys and black girls. They're not disciplined harshly on the same level as black boys and black girls. And you have to understand that institutionalized racism has a part to do with this. Preschool gets suspended three, four years old. Third graders get suspended for flaying the scissors up in his ear. Getting handcuffed and put and, and escorted out to school by a police officer. A third grader had to go through that. A third grader, a nine-year-old had to be arrested because it was flaying scissors in the air. And the teacher thought that, they, that he was fighting some money. Oh. And I talk about people of color. I talk about specifically black students. Because this is the disproportionate thing that happens to black students. I'm not talking about students of color right now. Okay? I'm only talking about black students. This is what we have to go through in the American education system. School to prison pipeline. Teachers um, not being paid enough. Schools crumbling, mass shootings with these white boys going in their schools, shooting up the place. I'm not saying all white boys, but there have been a handful of white men and white boys who have gone in their school to shut up the place. So, yes, we have to deal with school shootings and mass shootings. So we're talking about the whole gun thing. And Betsy DeVos wants guns in school. She wants teachers to carry guns. She up with that, too. So, we have to talk about that. Now, how do we stop the school to prison pipeline? Simple. Stop using suspension as the first answer. Stop it. Because it's not the first answer. It shouldn't be the first answer. Here's just some ways that Scooter Prison Pipeline hasn't tried to stop. I think when Obama was um, in office, he urged school districts to use the budget as a last, last result. That's what I'm saying. No one is saying that you can't discipline a scholar. No one is saying you can't suspend a scholar. What I'm saying is you shouldn't do that the first time you commit an offense. That should be the last thing you go to, not the first. In Clayton County, Georgia, a juvenile court made it agree with police and school districts to restrict cases where police arrested students and summoned them to court. Yes, police officers should have nothing, should have nothing to do with the disciplining of students. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No. The only thing I would say where you should be arrested by a police officer in school is you bring a weapon to school, like a gun, or not even a fight. Not not even a fight. Because a fight you can handle between the school. If you bring a weapon to school, there's only another situation where you should be arrested. Uh, drugs or a weapon. That's the only two things I believe you should be, quote-unquote, have the police involved. I'm not saying the police disciplined you, but I'm saying the police should be involved unless any criminal charges come. If it's serious enough to get any criminal charges um, filed. Maybe not against you, but against the parent. But I, 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 I don't know about that. I would, I would have to research that more. But I definitely think at least with the gun part, because the drug part is a little fishy. But definitely with the gun part, bring your gun to school, you're getting arrested. I don't care what the reason is for. Or a weapon in general. Um, the result of this happening in Clayton County, Georgia, graduation rates increased 24%, um, beating in the national average, which is awesome. In Broward County, Florida, police no longer deal with nonviolent offenses as of 2013. 
they don't deal with nonviolent offenses. The school needs to discipline the children, not you. Not the, not, not the police. Um, in Chicago public schools, there's a softening policy on cell phone use. In Los Angeles, children under 13 won't be referred to police for minor offenses. New York City Public Schools, principal to give permission to state to suspend students from subordination, any student to third grade or younger. I think what I meant, meant to say to that um, is, is that you should not be suspended if you're in a third grade or younger from subordination. And we need to start doing definitely restorative justice practices in these schools because the suspension thing has gotten way out of control and a lot of school districts just automatically go into suspension they think this bitch is going to this is not the 1980s anymore where you could just suspend students when there's zero, zero talent policies and have to go home for two days and come back and everything's cool and Gucci no we're not in the 1980s anymore you can't just go and suspend students for absolutely no reason um that's not that serious Again, I'm not saying that suspension should not happen, but what I am saying is that should be your last resort. Shouldn't be the first thing that you look for when disciplining a scholar. And police should not be involved in disciplining a scholars. The police should have been in schools in the first place. The police should not have been in schools in the first place. I don't believe that police should be in schools because these kids think school is a prison instead of a learning environment. Because just like the video said, as a police officer, you have a totally different mindset than a teacher or an administrator who went through these classes in college about how to discipline students and about how scholars act and things of that nature. You're just looking for anything anything wrong to do, and then you're going to criminally charge to or, or 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 discipline them. So you're coming from two different angles. So I don't believe the police should be involved in the school. I don't believe the, don't believe the police should be involved in school at all. And if I do believe the police should be involved in school, they should be required to take classes. Just like teachers and just like administrators should t have to take classes about education and about schooling and about how scholars act and, and all these things. They should have to be required to take classes. They should just either show up with their full uniform, being employed by the city, come to the school with their gun and everything. And they, no, 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 no. No. I think by taking those classes, you will be able to understand a lot better, and you'll have a different mindset when dealing with the scholars instead of you just, you know, wanting to arrest them or pretend to do something wrong. But we definitely need to start doing more restorative justice practices in these schools and stop criminalizing minor behavior. If you get cursed out, I'm sorry. But that does not rise to the level of suspension. It should be a detention. Should be maybe two detentions. But it shouldn't be rise to the level of suspension. Okay. A third grader flailing scissors in the air should not rise to the level of that boy being handcuffed and taken out to school by a police officer. If he was my scholar, I'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. Put the scissors down. Thank you. Thank you so much. Put the scissors down. Put the scissors down. If you can't control the system, you will... Listen, if he couldn't control the system, he would literally have to sit there and fold the paper and rip it. And he wouldn't be able to allow the whole system. But it's not that serious. It's not that serious. But you make it serious. So, definitely, we need to start doing more restorative justice practices. Okay? Like I told you, don't have police disciplining the students. Okay, don't use suspension as a last resort. Okay, have more counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists in the schools because these kids, black kids, especially that live in the inner city and go to these inner city public schools, go through a lot. And it's not talked about. They see a lot of stuff going on in their neighborhoods and they go through a lot at home and it's not talked about. And that's why you see all these uh, disruptions and everything else because they want attention. Because they may not get the attention at home. I have experienced it. I've taught summer school, so I know exactly what I'm not. I'm, listen, I'm talking about this from experience. I'm not just sitting here just feeling facts at you. I'm talking about this from my own personal experience of being a teacher. These kids, their home life suck. 
and they don't have a way to express this was about what's going on, so they do this or they get the attention that they want to talk about their home lives. So Devin needed to have more counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists in the school. We need to not have police officers in the schools at all. That would be my number one recommendation. But if you're going to have police officers in the schools, they should not be involved in anything dealing with discipline of the scholars unless it is dealing with the brigaded gun, weapon, or drugs to the school. That is it. If it's you're cursing out a teacher, if it's you step on your feet, don't you get out of your office to get involved. And also, suspensions should not be the last resort. One more time so people cannot uh, misscrew my words. I am not saying that you cannot suspend students. What I'm saying is you should not do it. That should not be your first option, should be your last option. Because your goal as an administrator is to try to keep the scholars in school, not kick them out. We'll be right back right after this. Make sure to follow the Naquan James Show on social media. On my Twitter and Instagram page, it's at the Naquan James Show. And make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great content. The Naquan James Show will return in just a moment. I'm so tired. This is about a 35 minute video. I'm so tired. I have nothing else to say about this. But comment down below your thoughts about the scooter prison pipeline and ways you think could be stopped. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.